What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the show. So we're on the road right now, of course, you see me in the car, and I want to talk a little bit about what uh, Senator Manchin said a couple of days ago, and I just caught it yesterday, and I wanted to put a video out earlier, however, they uh, were having some issues with cable, cable and internet, and so it uh, looks like they, someone must have hit something and knocked the whole line throughout the whole uh, neighborhood. So there are a lot of people uh, who are not getting internet or cable service in my area. So anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about entitlement. The entitlement society that Senator Manchin doesn't want us to become. And this is interesting. This is an interesting uh, argument, strategy, whatever you want to call it. Because when you think about it, I mean, we, we do have entitlements. We have Social Security. We, we just, uh, people started receiving the child tax credit. Uh, things like that, where it's a, it's a money that goes to individuals. It's a government program, however you want to, to phrase it. But the problem with this whole strategy coming from Senator Manchin of this entitlement society is really interesting to say the least because you have people who are receiving social security people who are, are veterans people who uh, railroad retirement people on SS, uh, SSI SSDI that at some point either they are in a position where they can't work they're disabled or they're in a situation where they've worked for years and years and they paid that payroll tax paying into Social Security, helping people out that were on Social Security while they were working. And now we're looking at it like, oh, this is an entitlement and we don't want to become an entitlement society. Well, you have a lot of people who paid in to that system and they are entitled to their money. And so it, it's just interesting when you start hearing these politicians like Senator Manchin coming out and talking about this. Mind you, West Virginia, and I love West Virginia, but look, you, gotta, you guys have to look at the reality here. West Virginia is not one of the richest states. It is actually one of the poorest states in the US, which means that some of the richer states are the ones that are helping West Virginia. And so when you, and, and the reason I mentioned West Virginia is because Senator Manchin is from West Virginia. And so when you look at it like that, when you look at it along those lines, you start to realize that Senator Manchin is just talking at this point and he's really not making much sense. And so Senator Bernie Sanders caught on to this and he got out there and really started going against uh, Senator Manchin where Senator Sanders for a long time tried to stay away from attacking Senator Manchin directly. Uh, but this was it. This was the last straw. He just said, you know what? I'm done with this. We really need to, to bring this out. And so Senator Bernie Sanders came right out and, and he addressed some of the same things that I just mentioned. The child tax credit, people on Social Security, uh, people receiving Medicare. Uh, that's another big one. You know, Senator Sanders right now, he's really pushing to in, improve Medicare, to allow vision, dental and hearing. And so it's... I don't know where we're going to go with this second infrastructure bill. And Senator Manchin is really digging in his heels when he, he's talking about this $1.5 trillion is the top line. And you hear the White House now coming out and saying, well, you know, we can do it more around $2 trillion or maybe $2.2 trillion. But Senator Manchin seems to be dug in on $1.5 trillion. Not to mention... Senator Manchin wants to do away with some of the, the proposals that are in the second infrastructure bill. He's talking about choose one when it comes to the child tax credit, when it comes to child care, when it comes to uh, other programs. He doesn't want all those programs in this second infrastructure bill. And so we're going to have to see where this, where this ends up and how this, this ends up. Uh, the good thing is that they've, they've addressed the debt ceiling at least for two months, so now they can really focus on this reconciliation bill, this second infrastructure bill. 
And so hopefully, hopefully Senator Manchin and Senator Sanders can sit down and start negotiating because at this point, Senator Manchin and Senator Sinema are the only ones that really are speaking out against this second infrastructure bill. And this is a bill that could provide a lot of assistance to the American people. And so we'll have to see what happens when it comes to where we go with the second infrastructure bill. But I was just amazed to hear Senator Manchin call this out, this, this whole entitlement society uh, strategy. Uh, I, I think it's a weak one. I think we're in a situation where we pay a lot into, we pay a lot for taxes. So we pay a lot into these programs. And then when we need those programs, they should be available for us. And we shouldn't feel guilty. Uh, this is one of the only countries, and I've traveled around the world. This is one, one country that I can put my finger on that, that really makes you feel guilty for spending your own money. Makes you feel guilty. You go out, you work a job for 20, 30 years, you're paying taxes, you're paying that payroll tax, and then when it comes time for retirement, and when it comes time to, to collect Social Security or to collect some of these other benefits that should be there for you, they make you feel guilty about it. Or they tell you that it's going away, so there's no sense in, in, in you wanting this program because it's not gonna be there in 10 years. One of the only countries that I know that makes us feel like that when it comes to collecting something that's owed to you. And the same thing when it comes to the tax credit, this child tax credit, you hear a lot of people talking about this, oh, it's free money and this and that, but you have people working and all they want is a tax cut, just like everyone else, just like corporations, the same way. Corporations want tax cuts, rich people want tax cuts, middle-class people want tax cuts, Poor people also want tax cuts. But when you start talking about middle class and poor people receiving tax cuts, that's a big problem. When rich people get it, it's fine. In 2017, it was a good deal. Everyone got tax cuts. We thought everyone was getting tax cuts, but it, it was the top. The top people, the, the, the rich people, they were getting the tax cuts. Middle class didn't get much. But when you start looking at that, when you start looking at it for the middle class and the poor, it's a big problem. We can't do this. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about this. Um, it was just amazing to me, really amazing to me to hear Senator Manchin's strategy here with this, we don't wanna be an entitlement society. Um, and then you start looking at another thing, another issue that I have is the mere fact that these politicians are making, they're in the top 5%. Maybe even, and a lot of them are actually in the top 1% when it comes to uh, the, how much money they make. Uh, but we'll just look at their salary. We'll look at their salary alone, 175000 a year. That puts them at the top 5%. And a lot of them have other wealth. So they don't just come in. They come in wealthy already. But when we're looking at entitlement, just look at how they work. Every month you have a recess which means you can take time off. Okay, yeah, recess, yeah, you go back to your home district, you're supposed to work in your home district and find out the needs of your district. But let's face it, a lot of these politicians, when they go on recess, they go home and they unwind and they might go on vacations and, and things like that. And so you have a, a group of people, or at least we'll, we'll talk about Senator Manchin because he's the one that really brought this up, but you have a group of politicians that are working maybe three weeks out of the month, two weeks out of the month, and then they go on recess every month. And in some months, like uh, August, they were off on recess pretty much the whole month. They did have to come back for some procedural votes. That was, was the House. Um, and then most of September, they were off. And so when it comes down to this whole situation of entitlement, we're paying these politicians. They're making $175,000 a year, something that most individuals don't ever make. And they're talking about entitlements. Or Senator Manchin, we'll, we'll talk about him. He's talking about entitlements. It's, it's almost laughable when you think about it. These politicians are entitled to this $175,000 a year, and they're working 
a lot less than the average American, the average firefighter, the average uh, police officer, the average person, nurse, doctor that works in a hospital that are making less than that. But these politicians feel like they're entitled to this money. So I want to get I want I want to know what you guys think about this. So let me know in, in the in the comment section below. Uh, just it's just amazing to me, and um, I don't know where this is going. I really don't. I'm hoping that we'll get into a situation where they will vote on something very soon, uh, so we can move forward with this first infrastructure bill and the second infrastructure bill. The jobs numbers came out today. Didn't look good. We need high paying jobs. And those high paying jobs, guess what? That first infrastructure bill will bring some high paying jobs to the American people. So we're gonna have to follow and see where it goes. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.